I was really interested in, in your descriptions of cat press um, syndrome as well. Yes. Whereby people um, assume and, and Fregolia syndrome as well, is it? Capra and Fregolia are like one another. Yeah. They're sort of like inverses of one another. In the Capra syndrome, people believe that somebody uh, close to them is really not th that person, but an imposter mm -hmm. who is very skilled at impersonating, as it were, your husband or wife or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Fregoli is the opposite, where you see somebody very familiar in somebody who you've only just met in, you know, and you project that the same person is in a number of disparate people. And I had a patient who believed her husband was two-timing her because she had Fregoli syndrome. And he was supposedly at work, but when she went shopping, every shop she went into, there he was. <laughs> With another woman. <laughs> With another woman. So um, that's, you know, that, they are very interesting. I mean, there's just so many of these syndromes. I mean, I cover a lot of them. Um, in greater detail in the yeah. book that I've so, just finished writing. So, so mm. Fregoli and, and, and Capras, mm. they, they indicate a, a right hemispheric deficit. They, they, they're both dependent on a right hemisphere deficit. And, and, and so, so what, what would the right hemisphere be able to do that it's not doing for them? Well, that, that, that's a good question and, uh, and, and perhaps there's not a very quick answer. They both belong to a group of syndromes called delusional misidentification mm -hmm. syndromes and uh, what happens there is that the type gets confused with the individual case. Mm -hmm. now, the right hemisphere is very good at understanding uniqueness. Mm -hmm. This is a, almost a core element of the way it works. So it sees the unique person, the unique animal or whatever it is, um, whereas the left hemisphere is seeing a category is seeing how things fall into categories right. and therefore the uniqueness gets lost yeah. and one of the things that happens is we are changing all the time mm -hmm. you know if you meet me this evening I may be in a different mood or yeah. you know uh, I may different clothes, different clothes <laughs> might have had a haircut you know um, and the right hemisphere keeps the concept of an individual over time mm -hmm. that is it doesn't change like little slices of it right. moment by moment, but is a seamless flowing experience. Okay. And the right hemisphere understands this seamless flowing experience, whereas the left hemisphere sees reality, and many of the deficit syndromes reveal this in a very dramatic way, right. sees reality as a lot of slices, rather like a jumpy old-fashioned cine film. Right. It do, and it sees time as just being another instant, another instant, another instant, whereas the right hemisphere sees the thing as a seamless flowing process. Now if you put those two things together, it can't see uniqueness and can't see flow, instead sees categories and sees them all as disjunct, the, you, you can see where we get to in terms of misidentification. So that's at least part of why these syndromes right. occur. So, so you know, if I have one of these syndromes mm. and, and I, I met you tonight, I might be mistaken in thinking that you were someone completely different oh, yes. because you were wearing a red uh, yes, I mean, you might, yeah. but there are all kinds of versions of this. I mean, I had a, a, a patient who, who thought that another patient was taking all her clothes and replacing them by almost exact matching clothes, but of inferior quality. And what she particularly <laughs> picked up was that they'd been to the washers so and they didn't feel quite right. Mm. Instead of thinking, well, it's the same, yeah. it's just continuous over time, thought, no, they're completely different. Mm. And so uh, this turns out to be on the edge of a very important distinction between, between the hemispheres. There are, there are quite a number of them. Uh, but just to uh, mention again about the, the importance of deficit syndromes, what actually started me on this 20-year track to writing The Master and His Emissary was going to a lecture one day by a colleague at the Maudsley called John Cutting, who had just written a book published by AUP called The Right Hem Cerebral Hemisphere and Psychiatric Disorders. And I, In medical school, I'd heard very little about the right cerebral hemisphere at all. Everything was about the left hemisphere right. strokes and tumours which caused you to lose speech or not be able to use your right hand, rather gross deficits. But what he'd noticed was that, okay, those are gross deficits, but when you have a right hemisphere stroke, parts of the very 
person go missing. Mm. And the world is subtly but devastatingly altered. And so although they've still got speech and can still use their right hand, they're in an alien realm. Whereas the person with a left hemisphere stroke may not be able to speak very well for a while, may not be able to use the right hemisphere, but is living in the same world as before yes. and understands everything to yeah. be what it was. Yeah. So they still have that sense of identity. Identity, uh, flow, <coughs> con continuity, uniqueness. Yeah. Whereas these things get lost in the when, when the right hemisphere is not able to function. And there were a couple of uh, cases that uh, are very striking. Um, both of them actually from Switzerland. Uh, there was a farmer who. Um, knew all his cows by, by name and by appearance. And after a right hemisphere stroke, he could barely tell the difference between a horse and a cow. Yeah. Um, and then there's another woman, also Swiss, who made it her life's work to get to know and catalogue the, the birds of Switzerland. And after a right hemisphere stroke, she said, all the birds are the same. Right. So she, and she can still talk about birds. She can still she talk about, about them. But she, but she could no longer see any differences. Mm. Yeah. So, so is it right to say that the left hemisphere is much more concerned with generalizations? Absolutely. And um, rather than, than seeing the unique essences of, of things? That is one of the distinctions.